Most religious searches begin with one massive misperception. People tend to start by making a very unfortunate yet understandable division between the sacred and the profane worlds. Early stage religion focuses on identifying sacred places, sacred time and seemingly sacred actions that then leaves the overwhelming majority of life unsacred. People are told to look for God in certain special places and in particular events. Usually it seems one's controlled by the clergy. Perhaps this is related to the clergy's need for job security, which is only natural. Early stage religion has limited the search for God to a very small field and thus it is large, largely ineffective unless people keep seeing and knowing at larger levels. In Christian mysticism, there is finally no distinction between the sacred and the profane. The whole universe and all events are sacred. There are doorways to the divine for those who know how to see. In other words, everything that happens is potentially sacred if you allow it to be. Our job as humans is to make admiration of reality and adoration of God fully conscious and intentional then everything is a prayer and an act of adoration. As the French friar Eli Leclerc beautifully paraphrased St. Francis, if we but knew how to adore, we could travel through the world with the tranquility of the great rivers, but only if we know how to adore. For those who have learned how to see fully, everything, absolutely everything is spiritual. This eventually and ironically leads to what the Lutheran mystic Dietrich Bonhoeffer called religionless Christianity. Bonhoeffer saw that many people were moving beyond the scaffolding of religion to the underlying and deeper Christian experience itself. And once we can accept that God is in, in all situations and that God can and will use even bad situations for good, then everything and everywhere becomes an occasion for good and an encounter with God. For God, even sin, tragedy and painful deaths are used to bring us to divine union. God wisely makes the problem itself part of the solution. It is all a matter of learning how to see rightly, fully and therefore truthfully. I heard about a family made video of a teenage daughter's last moments dying from cancer as she lovingly said goodbye. The family experienced both tears and joy through their faith and hope in eternal life and infinite love. This experience, standing on the threshold of death with their loved one, likely did more long lasting good for that family than years of formal religious education. I know that is true from other people's experiences. The result is religionless Christianity, which ironically might be the most religious of all. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He sheds on our way. While we do His good will, He abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, but His smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt nor a fear, not a sign or a tear, can abide while we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our toll he doth richly repay. Not a grief nor a loss, not a frown nor a cross, but is blessed if we trust and obey. 
trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. But we never can prove the delights of His love, until all on the altar we lay, for the favor He shows, and the joy He bestows, are for those who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Then in fellowship sweet, we will sit at His feet, or we'll walk by His side in the way. What He says we will do, where He sins we will go, Never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. God of our busyness and God of our rest, God of our giving and God of our receiving, God of all creation and God of our Sabbath. We come to you confused and certain, hopeful and hopeless, loved and unlovely. We come to you with all our faith and all our doubts, knowing, hoping, praying that you hear us. God of all, where there is hurt and heartbreak, bring your healing and consolation. Where there is violence and destruction, bring your peace and restoration. Where there is fear and failure, bring your consolation and compassion. We ask God that you would be in our lives, in the great moments and also in the small. Day by day we ask that you would be ever present to guide us support us and nurture us in our faith. Help us never to be getting stuck in a rut, believing all things are possible, dreaming dreams and having visions, always hoping and trusting, never stopping believing. Amen. <laughs>